Hello viewers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, yet again, I'll be taking you through my other prediction on poetry. And we will use the poem, The Face of Hunger by Mbuisine Mshali as a sample here. What I want to bring to our attention and uh, what I want us to see uh, at the end of this discussion is that questions asked in poetry are always uh, similar. And uh, you will realize that to a greater extent, there is a great similarity between the questions that we discussed in our other poem that was uh, addressed to the rich men who should not trust in their wealth, as you can also see here. Viewers, before we begin, allow me to ask those who are new here to kindly hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that anytime we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. Again, to our subscribers, thank you very much for your support. We cannot be where we are as a channel without your support. Let me take you fast through this poem, The Face of Hunger. I counted ribs on his concertina chest, bones protruding as if chiseled by a sculptor's hand of famine. He looked with glazed pupils, seeing only a burn on some sky-high shelf. The skin was pale and taut, like a, like a glove on a doctor's hand. His tongue darted in and out like a chameleon's, snatching a confetti of lies. Oh, child! Your stomach is a, is a den of lions, roaring day and night. So this is the poem we are going to use to answer the various questions uh, we have there. And the first question, the candidate is being asked about who the persona is. And just as I said in my previous video on poetry, that the persona is the talking voice of the poem. And a candidate needs to come up with contextual clues as to how the talking voice of the poem involves himself or herself in the poem. And throughout this poem, we have gone through the whole of the poem and uh, the the talking voice seems not to be involving themselves uh, the only contextual clue that we can find out in relation to that is on line one where the voice says i counted ribs on his concertina uh, chest and that is all about the talking voice so it seems as if the persona here is an observer who observes the ravaging effects of uh, famine and it is very important that a candidate should go ahead and pick up a line which he or she uses to illustrate the point. And that is the first line, I counted ribs on his concertina chest. Question two, what is the poem about? And this poem is about the agonizing effects of famine. So when the candidate states that, the candidate scores one mark. But remember, there are four marks assigned to this question. There are three marks still remaining. So, just as I said, 
in uh, my video changing your attitude in poetry which you can also look out for one thing that a candidate could do is look at each and every stanza and summarize it in one line then at the end of the day in answering the question what is the poem about the candidate can bring together those summarized lines like in this case in the first uh, stanza what we can call the first stanza here it talks about a famine uh, making the victim to be emaciated due to starvation then when we look at the other stanza he looked with the glazed pupils it also makes eyes to grow weak then going forward it brings about the rumbling and the roaring of the stomach so the poem is about the agonizing effects of uh, famine the victim is emaciated as a result of the starvation the victim's eyes grow weak and then lastly as a result of hunger the victim's stomach roars and rumbles question three the candidate is expected to identify the various instances of imagery and imagery comes as a result of the writers always using the environment or their surrounding to compare a given situation to glaring situations or glaring things or objects in their surrounding so one form of imagery here we see in the line which goes his tongue darted in and out like a chameleon's snatching a confetti of lies so the darting out of the tongue has been compared to a chameleon and uh, that is a simile and it has been compared to bring about the kind of disparation disillusionment and hopelessness that the victim of hunger has in the face of famine another form of imagery is a metaphor we have a metaphor in the two last lines where the persona says your stomach is a den of lions roaring day and night so the den of lions is a metaphorical way of referring to the rumbling of the victim's uh, stomach so remember there is a mark for identification of the form of imagery like for instance simile and there is another mark for illustration should you give the aspect of style whether simile or metaphor without the illustration then you don't score just the same way when you decide to only give the illustration minus identifying which form of imagery that is then you also don't score so ensure that when you pick on the simile then you give an illustration like in the line where it has been mentioned that his tongue darted in and out like a chameleon's and also metaphor uh, your stomach is a den of lions very important another question the candidate is expected to identify the dominant theme in this poem and the dominant theme here is the agonizing effects of a uh, famine and uh, a candidate can go ahead to illustrate that thematic concern by using 
spawns bones protruding as if chiseled by a sculptor's hand of a famine. Again, there can also be the thematic concern of desperation, disillusionment, and hopelessness. And the candidate can use the line where we have, he looked with the glazed pupils, seeing only a barn on some sky-high shelf to illustrate the issue of disparation, hopelessness, or disillusionment. Another question is uh, that of tone. And uh, there is a previous video that we talked about the attitude and tone in prose and poetry. So viewers, if you have not looked at that video, you may also search for it so that you get to correctly have the skill on how to identify tone and attitude in both prose and poetry. So the tone that we have here, we seem to be having a, a sort of resigned tone. When the persona says, he looked with glazed pupils, seeing only a burn on some sky-high shelf. So it brings about a tone of resignation that uh, the persona has resigned to the fact that the victim is going to have to live with uh, a, a famine as a common state of affairs. Question six, we have this statement here. Your stomach is a den. And the candidate is expected to negate that statement. And in making a statement negative, the candidate is simply going to insert note into that sentence. And it would be, your stomach is not a den. The last uh, question here, the candidate is expected to come up with the contextual meanings of the following words. And uh, the first word is protruding. So I would advise the candidate to go to that line and pick that line, uh, that word, and see words that are used next to it and look at the general context to come up with its contextual meaning. And uh, we have that in page, uh, on line two, bones protruding as if chiseled by sculptor's hand of famine. So in that case, protruding contextually means sticking out, bulging, or being visible from the outside. Uh, the second one is uh, pale. And we come across it on the line, the skin was pale and taut. So the context was that famine is what drives the victim into the skin being pale and taut. And in that case, pale may mean feeble or it may mean a skin being unhealthy. Then we have uh, the third word that is darted, that uh, from the line, his tongue darted in and out like a chameleon's. So darted could mean to move in and out. The tongue moved in and out, maybe as a result of extreme desire for food, something that the victim cannot quite uh, find. Then uh, the last uh, word or group of words or phrase is a den of lions. And uh, it is in the line, your stomach is a den of lions, roaring day and night. So the den of lions in this context would mean the stomach rumbling. Viewers, as we come to the end of uh, this video, I would reiterate my advice or what I said earlier when it comes to poetry. That poetry is just like comprehension. And as, as, as we have seen from this point, 
almost all questions can be comfortably interpreted from the poem itself. And uh, I talked about a poem being similar to prose. It is just that in prose, we have sentences. In poetry, we have lines. In prose, we have paragraphs that are made up of sentences. In poems, we have stanzas made up of lines. So I would want to advise us with an aim of boosting our confidence that the same way you can tackle comprehension passage, that is the same way a candidate can also comfortably tackle a poetry questions. Viewers, we come to the end of this video. Until next time. Thank you.